right, on this episode of the I-501-CU, the podcast for nonprofit board members, we're featuring, I'm interviewing Sean Sackman. Sean is commercial banking leader at Regions, and what an amazing career this young man has had. And Sean is very young, much younger than I. I got to know him through Leadership Florida. He has been noted as a top 250 power leader in, by the South Florida Business Journal. He's got his uh, undergraduate degree in marketing and finance from Florida State and his master's from U- University of Central Florida. He has served on a number of boards in his career. In today's conversation, listen to it from a perspective of career development. Yes, he talks about board role, board leadership, and everything related to this podcast, but the context can be for anybody who wants to grow in their careers. So, Sean, thank you, and everybody enjoy this podcast. Hey, everybody. Reed Corley here to let you know we will be releasing a new podcast every week. If you want to be the best board member you can be, visit our website, thecorleycompany.com, to sign up for our email list to be the first to know when a podcast drops. Well, welcome everybody to I-501-CU, the podcast for nonprofit board members. And today we're speaking with Sean Sackman, as you heard in the intro, and Sean's got what an incredible bio. Sean, so good to have you today. How are you doing on this beautiful Friday in Florida? Uh, Mike, doing fantastic. Thanks for having me. And what a wonderful program you're having here. Hopefully a lot of people, listeners, listen, get it, you know, implement it. So thanks for having me today. Well, Sean, I I appreciate you coming on because your wealth of experience is just going to be so insightful over the next 30 minutes or so. And, you know, I I shared your bio going into the this segment and you do a lot. I mean, you're so busy. You've got active kids. Why do you choose to serve on nonprofit boards? Great. It's a great question. Um, I, I think I've, I've had the benefit of an upbringing where my parents were very involved, not necessarily where I am in the community, but with people. And so I had that innate, just seeing it through my parents of giving, if it was to neighbors or the or the church or community. Um, but then ultimately, I just would read books and would always talk about, oh, just giving, like give first. And um, and, and what, what ultimately, when I was uh, young, I'm now middle-aged in the you know, mid-40s, so I have uh, a lot more gray hairs than I used to. But when I first started in, in my career, I, was, I, didn't, I didn't know fully what getting involved in community was, but I started to and just to learn. And, and ultimately, as I got pulled into it, I finally opened up doors of understanding how the whole community evolves together and how I've been down here in South Florida for my whole career and, and ultimately since uh, 79. But the when, when there's such a great harmony a lot of leaders do is that everybody's connected if they know it or not and the more i want to get involved so i want to help our community i want to help our future and and it was just something that i have a passion for and i realized that it's it's bigger than me it's bigger than my job it's bigger than on, on the board and ultimately i i think by doing that um it, it helps our, our definitely region but it helped me help me be a better better person you know, I recognize that it's not it's not about me, which I've always kind of uh, had that upbringing. But more and more, as I give uh, and and I see the benefit of other people, I feel better. Like, I, I feel like I get more in return sometimes than when I give. And I, I, we leave a project or an event, and ultimately everybody's happy. We may give some money or resources, or it could be painting or giving food. And when I leave, I I re- realize what life's about, and ultimately. Um, and, and that's something, uh, you know, I think I have, but something I learned. And so if some people don't have it today, it's definitely a learned skill and, and ultimately getting involved quickly helped me recognize the opportunity we have as a community to come together and it's always needed. There's leaders needed, there's, there's supporters needed. Um, but I do it because it's, it is a real passion and it's probably my purpose for life is giving back and, and my wife's the same way. So we're actually very in line. We like to give more than receive, you know. So it's 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 something that um, that I think is needed everywhere in the world, um, especially maybe now. But ultimately, more we do so, the better I think our community evolves. No matter if you're in business, a not for profit, government, if you're in school, it's just we're all connected. If we know it or not, the better we realize that, the better we can you can evolve your community no matter where where you're at. Oh, that's wonderful. So very, very community focused and it's driving you to expand beyond your work because, you know, you, you spend all day at work and you found a way to embed it, 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 both your work and your um, your volunteer life. And that's really, you know, something very special. I think a lot of people strive for. Do you, do you remember the first 
board you joined and how old you were? I do. It, 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 I'm a very lucky because um, it was when I was 25 years old. It's called Emerge Broward, and I had a friend who um, uh, saw some interest in me and taking uh, interest of, of my future and pulled me into this board, which we ha- actually helped start. It, it, it stemmed off of Leadership Broward, wants something for young professionals. But what this board taught me was um, ultimately the power of just getting involved. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any resources behind me, but it was the power of, of young professionals getting together. And it taught me multiple things. One was we started an organization from scratch. So that entrepreneurial spirit, but we actually developed different um, committees. We recruited, we mentored people, and then we took that and then brought it out to the community. And ultimately the the benefit was um, all, just getting this whole group, which now, you know, fast forward 20 years, I'm still friends with these people, but it was, I learned. So um, I'll give you actually a sidebar. Uh, my mentor at work said, um, I want you to learn leadership, but don't do it on necessarily my dime, which will help you go join a board, be in leadership committee on a board, learn that way as well. And, and he's right, not just because the company wasn't helping, which they were fantastic, but you get to learn from all other people. And I, and I learned more than just because I've been in banking my whole career. I learned from people in government, not for profit, an entrepreneur, real estate, and and it, it just it, my world expanded very quickly. So I got hooked, and just from that, because as as thirsty for growth, and I, and I still am. I think hopefully ever ever will have that that trait. But early on was that growth, and what that led to was then open my eyes to what go, was going on in the community. So I got exposed to things that I never knew existed, even though I lived here before I, I had my career. So, so ultimately, um, it's Emerge Brower still exists today. There's probably about 500 active members. If somebody asks me how to get involved, and there's there's one in Emerge Tampa, I'm sure it's everywhere, wherever you're listening in in the you know in the country. Um, just get involved, and that way it stemmed from. I'll give you a couple, uh, just another um, additions to it. So there's one of the communities we have, which is called Engage, and that gets involved in committees. And we have actually once a year we try to connect a board member to a not-for-profit and actually join as a board member. So we have an almost interview process. You get to kind of, you know, go almost like a job fair, but you do it, you know, interviewing with different not-for-profits. And so all of a sudden for me, who didn't know that there's that there like 300,000 not-for-profits in South Florida, I thought there was like five, right? United Way and some other big ones. I then recognized, oh, there's stuff for animals or stuff for, um, you know, disabilities and and food, right? So all uh, for me, not knowing was such a, a bless, you know, blessed to go through that process to just make aware, and then I was hooked. And and hopefully we'll talk about it at some point today. But part of it, um, which I was challenged or pushed to, was to take a leadership role. Just don't sit back and just sit, you know, go through the process because my organization told me to go through this emerged Broward program. It was how do I get involved? How do I then take the initiative to go start a program or to then bring others to help? And you can then see the outreach. We started with five people and we ended up with 500 young professionals getting involved in the community. And I can tell you, I've, I've speaking to them now years past. It's some of the best time we've ever had was going through that program. Well, I, I often say that the best leadership development availability to any business person, really anybody, is to join a nonprofit board. And you summed it up perfectly as to why. I absolutely love that. It, it, it just it broadens your, your horizons and really gives you experiential learning in real time. So you, you started to touch on this and a question I have. So you're involved with boards. Why Why do you desire to be a board chair why do you take on that additional responsibility and ultimately time commitment another good question i, I would i would um, be vulnerable and share i was probably nervous of taking on a board chair especially um i was fortunate to be in very high leadership roles within the company early so i started to develop it and and and, and even going back I me mean, i've always had leadership qualities throughout so even when i was young kind of had it but ultimately didn't didn't harness it or had the experience of some people that are 20, 30 years my senior on these boards. So it could be very fearful. And so, but I kept pushing myself. And then um, what I was told by good mentors was if you if you join a board, don't join just to sign up, join to get involved. And if you really want to get involved, take a leadership role. So maybe of a committee, 
or it could be in a, in a certain project to take initiative to take off on the side. Um, the board chair role is definitely an elevated position and something that um, I take to heart for multiple reasons because every board chair I think is, is, um, is a tentacle of that, that not-for-profit they're part of. I think even more so when you're board chair, you look at the executive director or CEO of that board to really be leaders of, of everything, the, the direction it's going or not going, right? So it, it, it's such an important role that you're setting the tone and and that's something that I, I love to do. I don't th you know, and I think I have it with, with internally within me, but I think people who aren't leaders can definitely do it. And I think you can do it with having the right people supporting behind you or the right executive director. And, and I absolutely love it to answer directly is, I love leading and I love setting the tone and I, and I love getting everybody in the right direction in a positive direction and, and, and everybody involved. And, and that's just something I love to do daily, but ultimately if I can do it and give to somewhere where I have a passion and get people involved, it, 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 I, I can live and breathe it. I can do it all day long. It's not like it's a job. And so I, I take calls, you know, late at night. Sometimes we have 6 a.m. calls with my, I'm part of the Urban League. Uh, today is the uh, active board chair. And Jermaine and I are very much aligned. And that makes it very easy for me to be a board chair because she is as motivating to me as, as uh, hopefully I am to her. But it is something that if you're going to get involved, get involved. And it ultimately, if you can get, really get involved, take the leadership role, it's something that I, um, I, I continue to at the age of now 43, but continue to learn how to even be a better leader because now I'm leaning and seeing all these people I never interacted with in my daily job. And so I strongly encourage it. Uh, if you have that skills or not, it is super rewarding and, um, and could be, could be nerve wracking, but jump in, I'd say, jump in, go, go ahead and do it. It's, a, it's such a rewarding, rewarding position. Oh, this is exciting. So I, I'm curious. So you, the opportunity presents, they say, Hey, Sean, would you like to be board chair? Probably somebody nominates you governance. How, how do you approach the role? You know, so it, it, almost from a, 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 a position of advise somebody else, your board chair, what, what are your tenants? How do you, how do you move into that role and start to get the board aligned? So my, so to be totally transparent and honest, I didn't, I didn't envision being the board chair right when I jumped in. Cause you know, at first it was like, let me figure out what's going on here. Um, I would tell you every time, uh, just staying on the urban league, cause, um, it's, it's where I'm actively on the board chair. Uh, check the box every time. It had great leadership. The financials are very strong. It aligned with my passion. The people on the board were fantastic. So I kept checking the boxes, but I didn't go in there saying, you know what, I'm going to be board chair in a few years. Um, and this is my eighth year on the on the, on the board itself. Um, I started just as a regular board member. They brought me into uh, the finance committee, which I became the treasurer for. And then from that seat, um, I was on the executive uh, executive board. So we had separate meetings and ultimately uh, is aligned with uh, six other board members. And um, and ultimately, I connected very well with Jermaine, who's been a long time executive director for the Urban League. And um, and so she helped um, encourage me. Um, I would tell you, I love her so much that I said I will do it as long as she's in that seat for a long time and she agreed to that. Um, but I, I uh, when it came up, I, it wasn't like I was ready and like, yes, yes, I'm waiting. It, I did pause and I paused not because I didn't want the role. I knew it was a full commitment. And 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 I have two boys. Um, they're super active in, in sports, which I coach. Um, I have a job that I got to take care of, right? I got to somehow keep, keep my wife Melissa happy when I can. So it wasn't it wasn't that um, I was necessarily ready, but when it, when she asked, I was super um, uh, appreciative. She thought of me, right? I felt, I felt like she saw something in, and, um, and then quickly, uh, I don't even think I took the day. Um, I quickly said yes. And I said yes, because as I mentioned a little bit earlier was it aligned with all the things that, that I loved about the organization. If I didn't have a passion for it, if I didn't think I can help or, um, or didn't check my, the, the boxes off, I would probably been a little more hes hesitant to say yes. But in this case, it, it did. And even in other cases, um, prior, in prior involvement, if I saw that I could really help, like, you know, Urban League is doing so well, so it's not like I have to change the direction, like it's just more to continue to increase of what the previous leadership has, has done, because they're, they're in such a, a great mode. But 
there's been some others where you just have to really change. And so that was like, you know what, I could do it and you roll my sleeves up, but I, it's going to take a long time. And that was a different thought of then where we're something that's really going well and just continue to increase or add another program. Um, so you, I think you got to know what's going on, but um, I, I, I always want to be in leadership roles, necessarily, not necessarily the board director or board chair, um, but I think if it aligns, why not? And um, I think a lot of people may have fear and don't do it. And, and it's, and the fear should not be there. I think it's just anything else. You don't know it. It's kind of a new role. You're out and out in front of the board, you're out in front of the market. And, and that could always be maybe hesitation for some people, but I can tell you, it's super rewarding. Um, I wish I could do more. you right. And, and so, um, so I didn't expect it, but ultimately I, I would, I'd always go in, want to be in leadership roles or some really involvement if it's head of committee um, in case of board chairs, I, I always ultimately welcome it, but I've been in leadership for now um, 13 years of my job. So I, I kind of know the leadership, but granted, I don't know everything. So I'm still learning, right? I hope we're all ever learning. Um, but it was a welcome opportunity that I didn't ask for. They, they came to me. Well, I, I tell you, I hope the audience heard you, several nuggets in there, Sean, and I appreciate you sharing. Uh, one is just the leadership development and growth you've reiterated that multiple times i think that's really important for the audience to hear i mean you're a fairly young guy and those people young in their careers listen to what sean is saying it's a tremendous opportunity to develop leadership skills while serving and, and getting into your community as sean talked about at the beginning of the podcast i also appreciate you saying you were very thoughtful and intentional about taking the role of board chair because you knew there was going to be a commitment a time commitment and, and it's a very important role and if you can't give 100 percent, you probably shouldn't accept the role so I, I appreciated that thoughtfulness and the fact you had boxes that were checked off which gave you comfort to move forward so uh, thank you for sharing that that's, i think that's a great learning opportunity and, and, and so now you're chair and you've been chair at other organizations as well do you have a philosophy how do you engage other board members can you just talk about the role of chair i find that fascinating and and we all struggle i've been a chair and you one day you wake up your chair and you're like i don't even know what to do you know so, so how <laughs> how do you start to man quote unquote manage that board and work with the executive director i, th I think it comes and it's probably maybe a separate podcast for you but <clears throat> the end of the day um in my daily life being a board board chair uh uh at work or at home i am who i am like you know you gotta know who you are and ultimately um and, and i'm human i make mistakes um uh, but but ultimately i'm self-confident and um and and the ever learning that we've been talking about is true i hope i do the rest of my life because that's the only i think i continue to grow um but but ultimately um it there's i think i think a, and i'll make a general statement which could be uh maybe not factual but it's my opinion that, that i think is probably directionally true i think a lot of people have fear in taking leaps of a job or a board chair and there's more nervousness or lack of confidence to do something um for for me i i ultimately uh, have a lot of self-talk right as hopefully all of us do mine's positive Ultimately, there, there's hesitation, but I overcome it. And I think um, taking these roles is um, something where I don't fear that part of it. I fear more the direction of um, the the organization, the you know the facts of that than than me. But I can see a lot of people having um, uh, fear in that. Um, but but going into and, and, and Mike, repeat the questions, make sure I hit directly on what you're saying. I, I, I have yeah, to... I'm just curious, how, how do you begin to even manage the board? And I put that in air quotes for the listeners, yeah. you know, because that's the role of the, you're the chief executive, not the CEO, you're the chair of the board. So your responsibility, of course, is to manage the board and work very closely with the CEO. How, how do you approach that? <clears throat> so, yeah, so another good question, that, which, is, which is correct, because um, the board chair, if you're not allowed with the CEO, it's a mess. Like it, you, you won't be able to do the other things, even if even if they're both positive. If you're in different different direction, it's it's a fail, right? Because you're you're going in. It's like two different companies running two different ways, and so you cannot be. You have to be aligned. Um, and, and part of my uh, getting comfort with uh, Jermaine, who's one of my favorite people in the world, uh, awesome leadership skills, was an easy yes. So then the second part was with the board of directors. And, um, and that is, and they, and they change over by the way, right? So it's not, I mean, we have, we have a very senior, uh, tenure, but it, they roll off every 10 years. We have, we make sure we get fresh, you know, people in fresh ideas. 
um, and they can re-up after a certain period of time, but after 10 years um, is where the, the uh, you know, your term expires. Um, but then I try to connect individually for, for everybody and going back to um, knowing my, my self-confidence is, you know, I'm, I'm okay if people have ideas are different than mine. In fact, I welcome it. And, and ultimately, you know, I think di more diverse ideas, more diversity, uh, more diverse thoughts. Um, I th and as long as people, we are okay getting on the table and then, and then stacking hands in that direction, even if it's not their own or mine, that's the board you want to. And as a board director, you need to foster that. So if there's something in a different direction that, um, that ultimately some is a great idea, but they're taking a negative tone for the board, your job as a leader is to make sure that doesn't happen. Maybe it happens in the board setting, maybe it happens on a one-off on the side, but that is super important. You set the tone as the, the board chair is, is to allow that. And ultimately, um, and, and, and just to, again, continue, continue to touch on the Urban League, because I'm, I'm, I'm there, it's probably the best I've had that in any setting. And, um, and it's not my doing. It's, you know, ultimately I continue to help foster that but uh, the executive leadership of the Urban League um, helps that. The prior chairs help that. So ultimately, if you get into that setting, which, which I am very fortunate, I've been in others where it's not the case and you need to change it. And it's much harder, it takes longer time. But as a leader, that's, that's, where, that's why you're there. It, your leadership's tough. And ultimately, change in direction, even though it may take a year or two years or three years, but you know it's the case and you gotta stay along that path. Maybe get maybe get different people on the bus or you know on, on the board, um, but that's also needed. And so you just need to recognize. And I think going back to um, what, which the path I was going of, just knowing who I am, I don't let um, negative things, positive things, you know, things that are, people disagree with me, change my own comfort of being a board chair. Uh, in fact, I would allow it or try to foster when it goes positive. And it's never ever about me. I'm just there to help, right? And, and as a board chair, you're to help and foster. And so I never make it about about Sean. I never make it about uh, you know any individual board member. We're all there as servants. And even as a board chair, you're just a leader of fostering that that development. Well, clearly you set the tone, and you're you're humble, and and I appreciate that. And you, you say you're just continuing to carry a previous torch, and that may be. But we've also seen situations where that previous torch had not been carried because the wrong person was in that leadership role. And so you know, uh, I'm impressed that you recognize that um, and that you're continuing to move in that direction. So a couple of things you said there, really important, the relationship with the CEO executive director, you have said that several times and that's so critical. And, and it sounds like you view that you, you, you're aligned, you all have to be aligned, obviously. Maybe it's not obvious, but that's a that's a role of a board chair to be aligned with the executive director. That's critically important, and then to make sure the the board is in lockstep with that direction. Can you talk a little bit about that? How how often do you talk to the CEO? What, a little bit about the the dynamics there. Yeah, well, and and definitely talk about uh, the timing. The alignment doesn't have to be you don't have to be best buddies, right? You don't have to go to grab a drink or lunch all the time, like, but. You have to be aligned if you're if you're not going to and if you're not paddling the same direction, right? Then 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 that's where that's where I think people get uh, you know um, you know disarray. But, but ultimately, um, fortunately, if you're aligned and you connect on a personal level, from it could be in business or home or whatever connectivity, I think that just helps and it helps right even at work, right? Having a friend at work, I mean, all those things just help. I think in, in doing something productive for whatever direction you're going in. Um, so. In the case of uh, Urban League, Jermaine and I are early risers, so we may have six or six thirty a.m. conversations. Um, usually, we communicate a lot. If somebody's up, or it's a quick phone call. It'd be a quick dis discussion. Um, it could be at four o'clock or five thirty. She'll just call me. Hey, this, this just came in, or this is going on. Um, we definitely have set meetings, uh, and as the board director, I have one on ones with with executive director. We have I lead the executive board the board meeting, and then um, option to attend uh, the several committees that we have. And so sometimes those committees, I'm there more just to listen and ultimately, if they ask a question, help support, but there's a leader of that committee 
and I'm there more, so I just have the the ear or the sounding board of all the communities versus being separated separated from it. And then I'm going back to I lead the executive board meeting that leads into the big board meeting. Um, there's there's small calls I've taken. It could be a business. Um, I've had some where I took a call which I didn't like at seven o'clock on a Saturday night recently, and as of a passing of a board member, which was very hard for for us. And but ultimately, anytime that phone calls, I I pick it up. Even if it's I'm in a meeting, granted, if I'm, I'm with a client, I'll pick it up. But if I'm in a meeting, I, I say a quick hello, you okay? And then I'll, if, if she's okay, I'll call back. But the, but that is, is important. Sometimes it can go, those calls can go, uh, you know, multiple times in a week. It could go a couple of weeks with no phone needed, but that's, you're just there because the executive director is looking to leadership. And what's great about the board of Mon with the Urban League is there's multiple people that Jermaine reached out to depending on what topic it is. It could be legal, it could be government related, maybe it's real estate. And so she's got the, the ability to call and hopefully any executive director just doesn't call the board of, the board chair can lean on the whole board to help out. And I'll tell you as the board chair, um, which we look at is to make sure you have the right pieces. If you have all bankers on the board, that is not the right setup. But you want to have certain industries, and if you see a gap, maybe you need an accountant, bring on an accountant. Maybe you need somebody from marketing or technology, right? And so your key as the board chair is that, along, you know, ultimately having uh, your relationship with the, the executive director. But you, you guys should be a lot of what do we all, what else do we need? And so she'll call me. She'll call them at any, any point in, in, the, in the day, um, and that's that's a pretty um, effective board. I've been in others where it has it's been more. Um, uh, uh, a pr like a systematic approach, like more meetings set up, less less informal. Um, or should say it's more formal in that case, less informal than I have today. I like the inf in, you know, informality, like for just call me when things are live. I hate we got to wait for a meeting in a week. Like it could be stale. And so even at work, I'm the same way. If something goes on, just call me. I don't want to wait for the one-on-one. -on -one. Like let's go, business is too quick. The world evolves too quick. I think that is like utopia. Like when you just quick phone calls, you may not always have that, so try to develop it. If you're on a board, maybe you don't have it today. Um, I think it's good to have the formal meetings, but I love the informal ones too, where it can just be a quick five minute phone call. I think that's wonderful advice in, in, in that type of that type of working relationship because it really is a working relationship. Oftentimes, people join nonprofit boards and think, "Oh, it's not going to be a lot of work and a lot of activity." But there is tremendous. You get out of it what you put into it, and so to make your in this case to make yourself available, certainly as board chair in support of your CEO, executive director, critically important. Uh, so I think that's very wise advice. Don't wait for the meetings. Address the issues right away because the world's fluid. And things change, and and you need they need that support right away. So as you think about your your board chair career, what are some highlights? What what are some of the the positive things that make you go, make you smile? It's 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 always uh, outward, by the way, for me. Um, and it's it's uh, it could be um, you know the the fundraising events you have fantastic and it's needed um, and. To be truthful, I love it. It's a need for the board to do what it does, and we celebrate it, and we should, because man, it goes a lot of work for those things, right? Um, but I, where I get my uh, heartstrings pulled, where I, um, even when I'm not the the board chair, is is just seeing it. Make, for me, it's kids, right? Helping out kids, and it's from you know, Make a Wish or Junior Achievements is on. Like though that for me, I will sometimes uh, I could man enough, I may shed a tear or at least water eye. Um, but it, it's really seeing the actually involvement of the activity, um, not necessarily the board meeting or the the fundraising event or the big check. It, for me, it's the outcome. And, and and ultimately I do all those things and I work hard with the boards for the outcome of helping whatever I'm a part of. Um, and, and ultimately, uh, and, and and ultimately, I think it's key, and we may touch on it briefly, just knowing that purpose, because um, I'm not doing it for, to be uh, just a leadership role, I'm doing it because I wanna help the community, right? And so, why, why I work hard, why I take the phone calls, why I try to get people involved is for that. And so, I always re revert back to it. If I ever am wondering why I'm doing it, I make sure I get involved in a program or something to realize why we're here. 
It's all about mission. Keep you, keep your eye on the mission, and that keeps everybody rowing in the same direction, and it gives you a sense of purpose. So I, I appreciate you saying that. Let me ask you something, maybe a little sensitive subject, but I think our listeners would be very curious. Um, and you touched on it a second ago. So it's a Saturday night at seven o'clock. You get a phone call that one of your board members has passed. I saw the posting. It was very very unfortunate, very sad. What does a board chair do? What did you do? How did you respond to that? How did you inform? What, what was your role in communicating that, that information? Yeah, hopefully uh, nobody has uh, those phone calls. Um, and this gentleman was uh, similar age to me. Um, and I've known him not just from the Urban League, which I met. Uh, he lives in my, my hometown. Um, I see him at church, I see him on the field. So it was very, very, very touching. Um, uh, so it was, uh, uh, Jermaine took a big step. She reached out to the board members. Um, we had communication and a lot of it was by email just to get out quickly. Uh, the, the first thing which was on Saturday was uh, Jermaine um, reached out to the executive board by email and then phone calls. Um, so that was, the, that was the, the quick once we heard that day. And then after that, um, we would try to um, celebrate. Actually, uh, Jermaine spoke at, at, at the uh, funeral. Um, of course, attended, right, support that family. And, and then we actually did a, um, uh, we honored him. We had a gala that, that was uh, two weeks ago and which was about two weeks after his passing. Um, but we, we celebrated him and honored him with a video and, uh, and we will continue to um, uplift him because he, he, he was uh, actually motivation to me what he would do in the community and his name is Jason Jenkins. Um, post that is now, now you, now you have, he was on, he's on the executive team with me. So now you have to backfill his position. Now we have to hire a board. So ultimately as sad as that is right now, I have steps and now we look at opportunities of how do we backfill? What do we need? Um, who do we, who do we elevate on executive or the current board to executive level? So there are steps after that. Um, but I think as, um, I tell you as the more than a board chair, but as a, as a personal friend, I will continue to, um, lift him up because, he was a uh, shining light in the community, and um, and I mean his energy, his passion for people was contagious, and he had a smile well, it led the room, and so I I remember him, and I, I will do that by all my involvement uh, throughout. That's on an indiv individual basis. The board chair ultimately you do have the systematic steps you got to go through, and that's that's just part of any organization. If somebody would leave the company or you know move out of the out of state. Um, I think it's all part of it, but um, but in this case, yeah, there was there was uh, some videos and things we did for him afterwards. Well, thank you for sharing that, Sean. I think that'll be helpful to our listeners. So, uh, let's hope that most people don't have to experience that. But change is inevitable, and like you said, if somebody moves out of town, you still have you got to backfill those positions. That's and that's the roles and responsibilities of the board chair and the, and the board as a whole. So, so last question. So, if and you touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, if somebody's interested in becoming a board chair, you know, what advice would you give them? What, what what boxes might they they check off? What should they think about and consider if they're currently on a board and contemplating becoming a board chair? I think the first box, even in, before getting on the board, is make sure you have a passion for that their 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 mission, their purpose. Because if it doesn't align, and if you are going to events at night or leading meetings, I think it's short lived. And like in this case, I'll, I'll, you know, it'd be a 10 year term that I'll, I'll live out after I'm current chair for two years, I'll be past chair for a year and then ultimately 10 years and I can roll back on at, at a point later in time. Sometimes you may, be, may, not, may not be on a board that long. Sometimes it could be five years, right? I think, I, and, you, and Mike, you probably know the answer because you're so involved in this, that I imagine the tenure of a board is probably three to five years is my guess. Um, ultimately, I, cause I've seen a lot, maybe people come for a year roll off. Um, and a lot of them, by the way, if you're thinking I'm going there for business is the wrong mindset, you should definitely go there to help the purpose. If you build relationships from it, business comes fantastic, but that's not why you join the board. And, and I see a lot of those things. I didn't get networking or business. I expected, well, you're missing the point, like go there, get involved, develop relationships from there. Definitely business happens and it comes. But if you, I, I can tell if you're going for business, I don't, I, I won't talk business intentionally. Like, let's talk about, let's talk about the mission. Um, so if you do have interest, definitely check the box on passion and make sure, cause it, it's a lot of work. 
And then second, ultimately, um, I, like for me, simple things, I check the financials, make sure they're sustainable because I, if I'm going to be there for five plus years, right, I'm going to make sure the companies or the not profit will be there as well. And um, if you don't know how to uh, read financials, that's okay. Why don't you just inquire and ask and uh, simple things like um, uh, six months of cash on hand so they can sustain operations if things halted today is probably a simple one. Um, do they own the building rent, right? All those things. So like, you know, I, I don't think you got to be a, a financial analyst to understand if the company will is, is sustainable and, and hopefully, and honestly, the executive director can state that very clearly. Um, and then, and then for me, ultimately, um, it's a time commitment. So uh, at one point when I was younger, I was on five nonprofit boards and I have now two boys, 11 and nine. I reduced it down to like one or two because I couldn't fulfill my own self-commitment of, of getting involved. So make sure your personal life and, and check with your spouse or, or whatever, you know, walk of life you're in because um, you can't, you can't um, give it 50%. You got to be all in. And, and if you do have an interest, I would ultimately, as if it's enough profit or your job, I would, tech, I would talk to the executive director and say, hey, maybe down the road, I'd love to be the, the board chair. How do I do that? Like, what does it look like? Maybe some steps, because maybe, maybe you become the head of the, the marketing or governance committee and then jump into there. But at least then you can understand. And hopefully then maybe a year after that, you can say with the executive director, hey, let's meet, like, where are we at? And, and, and be honest and listen, if, if you get feedback saying maybe not, not the right fit or maybe not the time, don't be, don't be discouraged, continue down the path. You know, there could be other things. There could be maybe in, in my case, they didn't need somebody that had a banking background or maybe they needed somebody, a, a woman figure, which is all good. Like there's no wrong answer for this. So don't be discouraged if you get feedback that it's not what you wanted to hear. If it is the feedback you wanted to hear, well, you know, push the pedal forward go all in and I would say do stuff above and beyond what your current role is in that, in that board. And then that will show leadership as you go into the executive or excuse me, sorry, with the board chair, you've earned that respect from all your board chairs or, uh, and board directors before you even get into the leadership role. And, and I can tell you um, for my, for me personally, I would just do stuff all the time because that's, that's just my makeup. But, um, but when I got in there, it was people were, you know, overjoyed like, Oh yeah, like this makes sense versus if I would go in there not being connected to people or not being involved or fully engaged, it'd be a question mark for people. And then I got to win them over once I'm in the chair, like do it on your way up. All right. And that should be in your company. It should be as part of the committee. Um, so I would say definitely don't be shy and it could be, I want to be in a leadership role and, and you get involved and it turns into the, the board chair all good. Like don't feel like you got like only direct a board chair. I'd say get involved, get in leadership and then you kind of navigate as you get into that, that, that board. Well, I tell you, you just gave a wonderful lesson in career development and leadership development. You did it in the context of the board position, but really what you shared, Sean, is anybody who wants to grow in their career, go above and beyond, do a little more, be present, be involved. You get out of it what you put into it. I just, I think that's just absolutely wonderful advice. And oh yes, you do the same thing when you're on a nonprofit board. You don't go in 50% like you said, you go in 100%. Well, Sean, I cannot thank you enough. This has been a master class and what it means to be on a board and to be a board chair. You are serving your community. You're helping it throughout your career and your development but you're making the impact on all those other people over there in Broward County. So I thank you and I thank you for coming on today and I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom with us. Oh, my fantastic, I'm so glad you're doing it. I can't wait to hear more and more coming from the, the 501c3 U. I think it's fantastic. Thanks for, thanks for having me today. Thanks, Sean. Wow, what a great interview with Sean Sackman. And here we are recapping with Reed. This is the name of our segment as we recap what we just heard. And it's interesting, it's from Reed's perspective, being a, a, a young person learning about the nonprofit sector. So Reed, you heard Sean talk about a number of things. Share with the audience, what are a few things that resonated with you? So the very first thing, one of the first things he said, and it resonated with me was when he first started his career, he didn't know what getting involved in the community was. And I think that I can relate to that. I think that a lot of people can relate to that. You hear people say, just, just get involved, just get involved. And no one tells you how to do that. So to me, knowing that that's not a unique problem was encouraging. And also 
that it is a learned skill as well as something that you're, you're not going to know it on the first time. So like jump in, do what you can. And, um, but it is a learned skill. So I thought that that was, that was pretty good. Yeah, but you're absolutely right. Uh, and uh, I'm, it's interesting you picked up on that because for me, it's just, hey, I get involved in your community, of course, but there was a time in my life, I didn't know what the heck that meant either. So what else, what else did Sean share that resonated with you? When he was talking about the relationship with the CEO or executive director from a board chair's perspective, he said, try to develop some informal communication. Um, he and his he as a board chair and his CEO, they, they're both early risers. So sometimes they'll call each other early in the morning. He's a big fan of phone calls. And I like why he said it because the business, business in the world moves too fast to wait for a meeting sometimes. And sometimes if it's just a quick phone call, like, just pick it up, develop some sort of informal communication with your um, CEO, executive director. So um, you can address items quicker than having to wait for that next meeting. Well, I like the fact that he did say it was a phone call. It's interesting because we're in this day and age, we're so accustomed to emails and texting and I'm guilty of it as anybody, but sometimes that phone call, it's it, it literally, it's a 30 second, knock it out, get it done. And you've got the benefit of uh, a much deeper form of communication. And I would say that a, um, a lot of young, at least from the young person's perspective, we don't like to phone call. <laughs> We've grown up with texting and it's sometimes it's more convenient. It's, um, so, you know, there's some negative connotations with the phone call. Sometimes you're like, why is this person calling me or whatever? But um, it is, it seems very important to be able to be able to do that with your CEO and executive director. Yeah, I even say throughout your career, if you really want to stick out, especially people my age, call us. Call us. Don't rely on texting and emailing. And you're right, because your generation, it is typically that. But a phone mm -hmm. call will separate you from everybody else. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Reed, that that resonates as we, we're doing this recap with Reed? When he was talking about his advice for somebody becoming a board chair, and he's talking about the boxes that he checked. And so your boxes don't have to be the same as his boxes, but check those boxes before you're becoming a board chair. His boxes were make sure you have a passion for the organization and we've heard that before from other leaders that is that probably is one that should be on everybody's checklist um the second one he had it check the financials um so for him as a banker it was very important for him so um make sure you're checking the boxes that are important to you and then finally another thing that's probably relevant to everybody is make sure your personal line life is aligned with the time commitment you cannot give 50 percent especially as a board chair. Yep, then there you have it, a recap uh, with Reed on the interview with Sean Sackman. And thank you everybody for listening.